Well, today I'm talking to you about professional learning communities. How does this Oh, Well, I'm sure you're all wondering what PLCs are, or professional learning communities. Basically, what I think about it is that it is a collaboration between teachers working toward a common goal, and that common goal is student learning and comprehension. They really want students to learn the material and be able to retain it, and not just have information thrown at them. Teachers will then hold themselves accountable to the results, and they will, if they're making a mistake, if they're not teaching in a way that students can connect, they will make that connection. They will work with the teachers. I'll explain more later. Um, how, I do, how I like to explain it is that it is regular risk-free quizzing with action. And once again, I'll talk about that more later on in my presentation. Student learning. Uh, once again, make sure students retain the information that they are learning. I just have it be taught to them if there's not a connection made that needs to be made between them. And teachers kind of know how students can connect to the material that they are being taught, that they are learning, and the kind of norms and values that they are associated with students and learning. So basically the three big questions teachers must ask before they start a PLC is, what do you want all students to learn? How will we know when a student has learned it? And how will we respond when a student experience difficulty in learning. Um, to answer the first one, what they do is they research state and national standards to make sure that their school district is up to date as far as their standards and whatever, that they can meet the nationals um, or standard nationally and that they're just up to par. Once that knowledge and everything is uh, gathered, they agree on the outcomes of which students need to learn specifically so that way they can achieve and they develop these assessments. So like I said, regular risk-free quizzing, they kind of have, um, it, it varies from learning community to learning community, but they have quizzing maybe bi-weekly or once every two weeks and just kind of, teachers can check up and see if students are uh, copying the material or something that they're not understanding. And my question for you all, if you want to participate in these, is what if, student, what if teachers didn't respond when a student experiences difficulty after they find out that they're not learning? It's kind of like a student won't learn. Student won't learn. And student especially in, oh, I'm sorry. Yes? Um, they would give up, and they would want to continue participating in the class. Right. They're going to they're gonna fall behind. They're gonna feel like they can't keep up and they're just not gonna be interested in the class, they're gonna get school, they're gonna, everything's just gonna go down the train basically for them. And that is why in learning communities, they get help immediately once they know that they are falling behind. <coughs> that way they don't have to reply to the summer school or media programs or whatever. And that retention can stay up. And this uh, also requires students to receive extra help whether or not like, um, teachers, maybe they realize what they're doing wrong, they can collaborate with other teachers in their learning community to figure out what they need to do, um, or just either one-on-one -on -one attention with particular students immediately with whatever they are struggling with. Um, in a certain particular elementary school over a four-year period, their grade level um, performance goes from 50% to 80%. They're able to meet the grade level requirement. And for middle school, 50% uh, of students are passing core subjects on a standard ICE test. 50% of students rose to 90% over a three year period. Similarly with uh, these elementary schools, 50% on SOAR averages to 75%, which is fantastic. We look pretty better, but. Um, and there are a lot of ways in which uh, a lot of ways in which schools say they are professional learning communities and that they, um, how they go about it can be different from, very from school to school. And some schools may do it completely wrong, some may do it right on. Um, I'm sure Mr. C will talk about this next week or in the future at the side of the schedule. So, um, and it's a lot of work and effort that teachers need to put in extra effort so that their students can achieve. So, it's it's a lot of work, but if done properly, they can be very effective in the classroom. Thank you. Wait,
question. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what do you think is the best way for effective learning community? Then? Um. Well, I I saw a um, YouTube video once where they had teachers. The whole class, the whole school day was delayed 40 minutes, in which the teachers came in, you know, early in the morning, and they sat down with other teachers for 40 minutes. And then school, and, like, the whole school day was delayed, and students came to like, sleep in for another hour, basically. And they kind of just talked things through. Um, like, once again, if they receive those quiz scores, they can be like, hey, why are, why are your students learning so much better on um, imperialism or something? Why my students are failing on this or whatever? And they can develop strategies and figure out and collaborate how what teachers can do better. Or, and that, that answer? Yeah, thank yeah, you. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. How would you do it if there was only one teacher teaching the one subject? That's difficult. Um, this is, I don't think it's just like the subjects, teachers, where if it's just all the social studies teachers do this, or all the biology teachers do this. I think it's actually the whole school, correct me? I don't know, it depends. It's different. It's different, okay. Um, once again, like it varies from school to school, and it's not like a concrete, like this is how it has to go, but generally this is the best, I don't know, I'm not even sure how to explain the whole thing correctly. Probably if one teacher's having trouble with the subject, they can ask another teacher to teach a different subject, how they would approach it. Mm -hmm. And it's, once again, it's a lot of effort, and the whole school, like, curriculum thing is to change in order for this to happen. It's a lot of effort and there needs to be some commitment and dedication to this if it were to be done.